Hey guys, Chris here. Today I have one of the most intriguing stories I think I've ever come across. It started out as a missing persons case and it expanded decades, generations, and even world history. <laughs> Quite amazing. So because of that, I've decided I need to do this in three parts. This is part one of three. That's next. Okay, so we have a Great Basin Wild Horse Amber here. That's a new beer for me. I think it's a new beer for them too, so I'm gonna go drop that in the creek. Okay, so I am in the Sierra Nevada today, as usual, and this afternoon, I am underneath a bridge. <laughs> There's a pretty wild creek over here. We may get some traffic above, above me, but I am definitely in the mountains here as well, so that's good. It's a little odd to be under a bridge. I feel a little bit like a troll under here. <laughs> the troll under the bridge. Um, this is Plumas Eureka State Park, so I believe this stonework and this bridge are really pretty old. Probably the 1930s is my guess. Uh, I think it became a park in the 1930s. So, beautiful park. Uh, Eureka Peak is right over here. A lot of mining operations going on around here in the old days, gold, gold rush days. And I even found, I was hiking earlier, I found a, a mining car in the, off the trail in the forest. Just an old mining car, just sitting inside, kind of bent up and stuff. So, time for the beer. <sighs> nice and cool under here though. It's been a hot day in Northern California here, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, Wild Horse. Great Basin Brewing Company, so. I do like a uh, Amber Ale. So like I said, I am in the Sierra Nevada. I do a lot of my stories from the Sierra Nevada. Sometimes the desert, sometimes other places. But I just love it up here. This is an amazing mountain range. It's not as large as the Rockies or the Appalachian Mountains. It's 400 miles long, 50 to 80 miles wide, depending on where you're at. Borders California, Nevada, but it's mostly in California. It runs north and south, almost all the way to uh, Oregon. And then it peters out and then the Cascades pick up right around Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta is a 14,000 foot peak. The first highest is in the Sierra Nevada here and it is 14,505 feet. That is Mount Whitney, 14,505. Highest peak in the lower 48. Second highest is Mount Williamson, southern end of the Sierra Nevada mountains. 
And that is where our story takes place. So in 2019, two young men from San Diego, Tyler Hoffer and Brandon Folan, wanted to go and summit Mount Williamson, second highest peak in California. They were experienced outdoorsmen, they've done a few peaks before, and they thought it would be really cool to bag this second largest peak in California. So they made the trip around the southern end of the uh, Sierra Nevada, came up, I believe near Independence, California, and they worked their way up to this Mount Williamson. Just an epic peak, epic hike. And they got up around about 12,000 feet, and they're in this scree field, rock field, very similar to this kind of rocks under this bridge here. Rocks all over, just a sea of rocks. And a series of lakes that they were in. They were passing these lakes as they are heading up to the base of the peak, and they're a couple hours away from working their way up to the very top of this Mount Williamson. As they were going through this rock field, they noticed amongst all the rock, a white rock, or at least what they thought was a white rock. And Tyler went over to investigate it. Heads up, and as he's approaching, it looked more like bone, like maybe an animal skull or something, but it was buried in the, the rock. So they came up to this site, pulled a few rocks away, and to their shock, they found a human skull. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you imagine hiking and you find a human skull? Crazy. They continued to remove rock, and they found a complete skeleton, mostly intact. In fact, it had a belt around its waist, leather shoes with rubber soles on it, still on this skeleton. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Also, they noticed the hands on it were folded over like somebody had buried it. Tyler noticed there was a dent in the skull. And his first thought was, Somebody hit somebody over the head with a rock, there's rocks everywhere, and just buried this guy. So they assumed, God, this looks like a homicide. We just came upon a potential homicide crime scene. They were pretty shocked. They decided the best they could do at this point, because they're on this long hike, they, it was like, a believe, a three plus day hike. They had to make a base camp, go up through this rock field, summit, come down, camp again, and work their way out. So I think it was three days. So Tyler and Brandon worked their way to the top of this mountain. Amazing views. They could see well out in the Nevada desert, well into California, up and down the Sierra Crest there. They were also able to get cell phone reception. They called the Inyo County Sheriff's Department and told them what they had found on top of this mountain. I mean, just at the base of the peak there at 12,000 feet, they were now at 14,000 feet. The Sheriff's Department for Inyo County sent a helicopter to check this out, retrieve it, whatever they needed to do. Brandon and Tyler met them at the 12,000 foot level where they found this, showed them what they had found. I believe they possibly even flew them back down unless they had to go back to the base camp, not sure. The Sheriff's Department determined that there was no foul play. They approximated whoever this person was slipped on a rock, probably hit his head and died. They checked their missing persons reports the last few years. They found nothing. 
they looked back as far as they could on their missing person database for that area. They found nothing. So quickly becoming a mystery as to what happened. Brandon and Tyler were really shocked what they had found. They were grateful that they may have helped somebody find some closure on a loved one. That was obviously somebody's loved one who died. The Sheriff's Department determined that the remains were from a long time ago. They were very old. They didn't know how old. But they were going to do some homework and really widen the investigation and see if they could resolve who this person was that these two young men found on top of this mountain. Not only did the Sheriff's Department determine that it was old, they determined it was most likely several decades old. So now that threw it into a whole nother realm of could be anything. So they had to go back and search history, not just in their current database. Turns out in 1945, during World War II, there was a man who went missing in that very location. And they had a good idea who it was now, based on history, not their database, but what they knew about history. And this was 75 years ago that this person went missing up there. So now the search was widened to, we, they needed to look at DNA and see if they could find some family members of this person that had gone missing in 1945. So in the next episode on this series, we're going to find out what the Inyo County Sheriff's Department found with this DNA testing and who it was matched with and discover what happened to this person in 1945. And it turns out it was August of 1945. The story gets pretty epic and so that's why I'm trying to break it up into three parts here. And I will put that, I will post that as soon as I can. I really appreciate you guys for following my channel. I'm having a lot of fun out here doing this. It's really interesting for me, this history and scary stuff. And it's just very interesting. And we can all learn from it as well, too. So, But thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next one. And as always, keep hiking.